It's Computer Stuff with Carl Bleming. Well, I got my old Apple iBook out the other day, and I wanted to try a few things with it. I thought I'd just make a video about what happened. I've made videos about this before, but basically this is a um, iBook special edition graphite that runs at 366 megahertz. Um, and the biggest change from the standard model is that I've I've taken out the uh, the original six gigabyte hard drive that came in it and I replaced it with a homemade solid state drive that I made with an adapter and a couple compact flash cards. The operating system that I did have installed on this was Mac OS X Panther, which is version 10.3.9. And this is the most recent version of OS X that we'll install on this machine. Um, now I know that uh, uh, some people can install OS X Tiger on their on their iBooks, uh, but this is the model without the FireWire port. So the installer will actually not work if I try to load Tiger onto this. Uh, plus, Tiger usually comes on a, uh, a DVD, and this only has a CD-ROM drive. Now what I wanted to try experimenting with on this is uh, loading uh, Ubuntu Linux on it. The reason is that uh, Panther is an old operating system and if you want to install any modern versions of software on it you're, you're, you're just pretty much out of luck. Um, so, But if I were to install uh, Ubuntu on it then I could try out some, uh, you know, like a new version of Firefox for example. So I downloaded uh, Ubuntu, the latest version, 12.04, the desktop CD for PowerPC, not Intel, and I installed it, and it worked, you know, it, it installed, um, you know, I just booted right from the CD and you could install it. Uh, my criticism, though, is that it was extremely slow. It took forever. It took... Uh, it was more than two hours. It could have been even three or four hours to just to install it. I tried timing it, uh, starting from the computer being off and booting up until a point where you can use it. And it took about a minute and 27 seconds to get to the password prompt. And then it took me one or two seconds to type it. And then from there until the point where the Unity desktop was uh, fully displayed, it took... Uh, the total boot time was uh, three minutes and seven seconds, which is, is horrendously slow for Ubuntu. You know, typically on a modern computer, you're up and running in less than 20 seconds. You know, so my next attempt was uh, Lubuntu, which is uh, now standard Ubuntu has Unity as the desktop interface, but this version uses uh, something called LXDE as the desktop interface. Uh, but this is, again, it's the most recent version, 12.04, uh, for PowerPC. Now, Lubuntu uh, was built with a focus on speed and efficiency, so it generally works better with older hardware, so that's why I decided to uh, try it out, see if it was any better than the standard Ubuntu. And that's what I have installed on this right now, so let me boot it up and show you how it works. Okay, well I didn't show it starting up, but uh, basically it works a lot faster than the standard Ubuntu. Uh, so the boot time is better uh, in Lubuntu compared to the regular version. Um, it took uh, about a minute and 45 seconds total, including typing the password. Well, there's two things that bother me right away about it. Um, one is these, these graphics artifacts here. I'm not sure what's causing this. When I was installing it, and the first time I I uh, was using the computer. It didn't have those on there, but um, now a day later, all of a sudden, we've got this this stuff. Um, and the second thing is that I it turns out that the Wi-Fi card will not work. Um, it keeps asking for a password. I type the password, and then it won't accept it. It's my password. You hit connect. 
it thinks for a while and you know then it'll just ask you for the password again so without wireless it's not that uh, that useful um, although when I installed it I did have a direct connection through the Ethernet port to download all the current updates um, and this now Lubuntu typically has Chrome as the default web browser uh, but this does have Firefox, and I'm guessing that's because they couldn't get um, uh, Chrome to compile on PowerPC. But it's fairly responsive. You know, these are all the default programs here. Accessories, there's a few games. It's a scanner, graphics editor, Firefox, uh, an IM program. Oh, there it goes. You see, now it's asking me for the password again. I'm just going to cancel. Okay, where was I? Office uses a AB, AB word, AB word as the uh, word processor. Um, And there you go, system tools, preferences, where you change the settings, etc. So it's pretty simple. It's a, kind of a cut down version with a, because, they, like I said, they're focusing on efficiency with this. Well, let me just start up Firefox, even though I won't get on the internet. Now, the screen on this computer is uh, 800 by 600 pixels which is tiny by today's standards but uh, so typically actually if when I have been using this um, it defaults to the mobile version of most websites which is interesting and it's it's helpful actually because you know the, the mobile devices phones have smaller screens anyway so um, that's pretty cool so I, I don't know what I can really show you without getting online but um, you can you can see how fast the menus are drawing here it's not instantaneous, but it's not like super slow either. And again, you've got this uh, mess. The graphics are kind of messed up here. Let me just get out of this. This is the word processor. Um, again, you get these, these graphics, these artifacts here. Um, and it is kind of slow. You know, the, the display of the text kind of lags behind as I type. So I don't know how useful this would be as a word processor. Um, I think I'd be tempted just to use a standard text editor, which I think, well, let me try and find it. Yeah, under accessories, I guess it's called leaf pad. Let me try that. Yeah, that is much more responsive, as you might expect, because of the way the graphics is. <laughs> Because of the way the graphics is screwed up here, I can't even tell exactly where. Actually, I got it in the first try there, but it's hard to tell where you're supposed to click to close the windows. So I would say this is something that I'm not going to use. My, uh, I just wanted to record that because I'm today I'm planning to uh, wipe the drive and reinstall. Um, actually, I'm not going to go back to Panther this time. I'm going to try the original uh, classic OS 9. Uh, because uh, even though Panther ran pretty well on it um, and it had better software options, uh, 
still the classic operating system on, on an old machine like this, really it's the fastest, most responsive operating system that is available that I know of. Um, hey, if there's another one that I haven't tried, let me know. But I'm going to try uh, doing that. And I realized that uh, even though I was running Panther, most of the software that I was running was classic software anyway. And there is a there is a web browser called Classilla, which is based on um, Mozilla, which is the same thing that Firefox is based on. And it's a, a project that they're trying to uh, create a modern web browser using, you know, that will work on the classic operating system. So I'm going to try that out. And if you want to, if you know, if anyone's interested in how that turns out, let me know, and maybe I'll make another video. But uh, uh, that is it. I just wanted to show you Lubuntu running on a, uh, you know, 11-year-old Apple iBook. Thanks for watching.